The year was 1963. Gas was 30 cents a gallon, a brand new car was 2,000 bucks, and a fastback V8 muscle car had just hit the streets. It was the slick new Mercury Marauder. Those days may be gone, but definitely not forgotten. At least not by Mercury. Hi, I'm Tommy Kendall, and that was your first look at the brand new 2003 Mercury Marauder. Mercury's first attempt to reconnect with its performance heritage. Today, we're going to put it to the test on the road and on the track to find out if this new offering lives up to its own legacy as one of the most powerful muscle cars to prowl the streets. We're also going to be talking to Mercury executive Elena Ford and auto racing icon Parnelli Jones. But first, I'm going to see how the Marauder does in the wide open expanses of the Mojave Desert. The lake beds are flat, but they are not billiard table smooth. There's a lot of chatter, little bumps caused by the cracks when it rains and dries out. And that's a really good test of, of the shock absorbers in terms of the real small chatter bumps, little shocks that you get on the freeway. How well does it dampen those things out? And we're cruising along here 60 miles an hour on what is effectively a dirt road. And it's very nice, very comfortable. It takes all the sharp edges off that. And one of the problems with a, with a solid rear axle car, when you get into some of the chatter like you have here on the dry lake bed, most people won't encounter that very often, but the freeways with the concrete pads are not quite perfectly aligned. You get a and some cars tend to the back end kind of does an axle hop, and I'm not feeling that. This is the ultimate car to just point towards Vegas and nail it. Now another thing about this car that you can't miss is the size. Some people like small cars. I happen to like big cars. I'm a big guy. I'm six foot five. And uh, for a while there, it was looking like you weren't going to be able to find some sedans. So for people that like big, fast, four-door sedans, this has got it all. These are the exact same gauges that were in my Trans Am car. They're autometer gauges, but not just autometer. They're the ultra light. It's a super lightweight. I'm a little surprised to see that. You know, car business is so cost conscious these days. Uh, you know, kind of this carbon fiber look dash. In the early days, Henry Ford said, you can get this car in any color as long as it's black. Well, to the street rider, what other color is there? And that's all this comes in, black for the purist. The neat thing about the Coyote dry lake beds, it's kind of like the California version of the Bonneville salt flats. It's just level and smooth as far as you can see. So it just begs for speed. The other thing it begs for is, remember that movie Strange Brew, where they're just driving along and they just have this long, long conversation and they're going 60 miles an hour or something like that and they never look where they're going. That's what this is like for me because, you know, it just, I want, I've always wanted to do that. The topography is much like that scene in the cult classic, The Vanishing Point. Don't go away. I'm headed to the Palmdale Drag Strip, where legendary race car driver Parnelli Jones is going to help us take this car to the limit. So keep your motor running. The Speed Channel Test Drive will be right back. Welcome back to Speed Channel's test drive of the Mercury Marauder. Marauder has a proud racing heritage, and one of its most famous wins might just be the Pikes Peak Hill Climb in 1963. A great race, a classic car, and with us today, the legendary driver who is behind the wheel. Parnelli Jones, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, as we just saw from the 1963 Pikes Peak race, you are no stranger to powerful Mercuries. Tell us a little something about that car that brought you the victory in 63. Well, actually, it was a high-performance car that was built from the ground up, and it had a high-performance engine in it, uh, blueprinted all the way through with a high-performance cam and put out a lot of power. Now, this behind me is a 63 Marauder, one of the few left in this country that's in nice shape. Does that bring back some memories? 
Well, it certainly does. Obviously, uh, it looked like the stock car that I drove in 1963 and 64. Racing a hopped up road car up Pikes Peak, is that as nuts as it looks? Well, it's certainly one of the most dangerous race courses I've ever driven, but I'll tell you one thing, the car handled quite well, and obviously we got to the top and won. Were there any uh, special stories or anything that sticks out in your mind? Well, you know, it has 166 hairpin turns. Obviously, uh, you know, it's very dangerous, and especially when you get up past the uh, tree line. You know, down at the bottom, we'd run real hard in the trees because you felt if you got off the road, at least the tree would stop you. But when you got up higher, there's certain places if you went off, they wouldn't even come after you. It was very dangerous. So when I got to that point, I would make sure that I got to the top. Wow, that's saying something, because you're known as the bravest of the brave, so for you to admit that you kind of cooled it up top, that must be some kind of course. Now, this new Marauder, what did you think when you first heard about it? I was real skeptical, actually. Uh, you know, after driving it, I realized they really had something. This particular car really has tremendous acceleration, and it has a 355 rear axle with a limited slip differential, and that four-speed automatic, I mean, it really gets off the line. And not only does it accelerate quite well, it certainly stops well. It's got great big disc brakes on it, really can get, get on the brakes. And you could actually race this one down Pikes Peak, unlike the old one, right? So you got that right, yeah. Now, the new Marauder, if you had to pick one thing you liked the best, what would it be? I think it's the performance. I mean, it has tremendous acceleration. And of course, with the electronics that they have today, I mean, this thing really performs. I've never heard a race car driver say a car had enough power, but for everyday use, will this get the job done? Well, it certainly will, especially in my book, because I like a comfortable sedan like this, especially with a lot of power. It makes it uh, a lot of fun to drive. You don't strike me as a front-wheel drive kind of guy. You like the rear-wheel drive in this car? Oh, I certainly do. I think most race drivers would like a rear-wheel drive car. Uh, front-wheel drive cars just don't appeal to me that much. Now, you've never done a burnout before, have you? Oh, never. <laughs> well, it's been 40 years since you've raced a Marauder. Are you ready to get back in the saddle? Yeah. Are you man enough to drive that 63? All right, tough guy. Well, that was a good warm-up, but what do you say we head over to Willow Springs, see how she does on a road course? Sure, let's do it. All right. Well, don't go away, because Parnelli and I are headed to Willow Springs Raceway to give the new Marauder a real workout when the Speed Channel test drive continues. Welcome back to the Speed Channel test drive of the Mercury Marauder. I'm at California's Willow Springs Raceway with famed Mercury driver Parnelli Jones. We just went head-to-head -head at the Palmdale Dragway, but sometimes, there's more to life than speed. Sometimes, there's curves. Parnelli didn't waste any time taking it to the track. Let's check in with him now and see how this new ride feels. Now we're approaching turn one, and you have to use the brakes a little bit here, but this car really has excellent brakes, uh, which uh, gives you a lot of security going into the corner. We're, we're making these turns uh, very smoothly and uh, carrying a lot of speed through them. One thing about this engine, it's uh, a 4.6 liter dual overhead cam engine. It uh, puts out a lot of power. It has 302 horsepower and uh, 318 pounds of uh, torque, which gives it a lot of the acceleration coming out of the turns. It also has a four-speed uh, transmission with a high uh, rev torque converter. And that also, uh, you know, gives a chance to keep the RPM up. With the uh, limited slip in the rear end with the 355 axle, I mean, it makes it a real high-performance vehicle.
One thing I like about this car, you know, it has a lot of uh, a lot of power, you know, and a lot of performance, but uh, it also is really comfortable. You know, it's a great feel, which really makes it enjoyable. Wow. You know, Mercury describes this car as fast, black, and cool. After running it on the track, what do you think? I'm going to tell you, this Marauder is really a lot of fun to drive. I mean, I was going through turn two over there, and uh, what I thought was a maximum speed like that, and it was so comfortable that I started jacking the steering wheel back and forth, and uh, I mean, it just handles fabulous. I, With all this horsepower that this thing has, I mean, I'm impressed with the way it handles. So the muscle cars of days gone by that just went in a straight line, it's a whole new ball game now. It certainly is, and not only that, I mean, in the, you know, in braking, unbelievable. The car stays real stable through the turns, and you can drive it really deep into the corners. I mean, the braking is fabulous. Let's throw a cage in this baby and head for the peak. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Parnelli, thanks for joining us. Wow, I think I ought to have one of these in my garage. I'll second that. Don't go away. We're about to throw it into overdrive with car and driver's Barry Winfield when the Speed Channel test drive continues. Welcome back to the Speed Channel test drive. In just a minute, we'll be talking with car and driver's Barry Winfield. But before we hear from a guy who reviews cars, let's talk to the people who make them. Mercury brand manager Elena Ford at World Headquarters for Lincoln and Mercury. Well, Mercury is a very important part of the Ford family heritage, and Edsel Ford, my great-grandfather, started to bridge the gap between Ford and Lincoln. What was happening was is a lot of our customers that were coming out of Ford products couldn't afford to go into Lincoln products, and therefore they were going to our competition. Today, Mercury continues to fill that space between Ford and Lincoln, and we continue to bring out new products that will sustain the long and healthy brand of Mercury. Marauder was originally established in 1963 as an engine package, a performance engine package with 300 and 400 horsepower engines. So the 40th anniversary is about the name. Then in 1969, we actually took the name and put it onto a vehicle. And Mercury at the time was all about comfort and convenience and functionality. And what Marauder brought to the table was V8 power, dual exhaust, rear wheel drive, interior floor mounted shifter all with room for five people and that's key to us today is bringing back this performance and this functionality with power and substance what we like to think of it is as a modern twist on a classic we took the vehicle to SEMA show in 1998 and the reaction from the consumers and from the public was incredible and we came back and we did some research and the research came back very positive and we decided to put the car into development as you can see this is what we've got we've got 2003 Marauder Mercury is looking to rekindle its performance car spirit with this car let's see how it looks to a professional critic car and drivers Barry Winfield welcome to the show thank you as they say talk is cheap so let's get right to business Now some American cars, to get them to handle, they just button them down and they're pretty harsh. What are your thoughts on this? I think this is a really nice compromise. They've put some quality pieces in here. They've uh, beefed up the, the structure quite well. They've put in additional uh, cross members in the, in the frame that really have uh, had the desired effect. It really seems to have tied the thing together very well. Now when you think about it, all big cars should be like this. There's really no reason for them to be sort of squashy and boring. It's a remarkably poised big car. Is there anything that stands out performance-wise? It doesn't particularly like standing start acceleration tests. In fact, my magazine tested it and it ran 7.5 seconds, which is not exactly outstanding. But, but once you're actually moving and underway, uh, you can get the car to go very quickly. 
especially if you've got an interesting road to drive it on. Speaking of interesting roads, we're heading into turn nine at Willow Springs, which is, I feel, one of the more difficult cor corners in all of motorsports. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you get that wrong, you go farming, as they say. The brakes seem to be pretty good, too. 11-inch discs in the front and 10-inch discs in the back. It seems to be more than adequate. You know, 4,000-pound car coming from 110 miles an hour in turn one uh, really hauls it down, huh? Yeah, it sure does. The pedal feel is pretty good, too. Uh, a lot of the domestic companies have had problems with squishy pedal feel, but this one actually is quite positive. How does it stack up against its segment competition right now? Well, there isn't really much in the segment. I can't really think of a vehicle that's directly comparable to this because you've got a full-size traditional sedan here. And at the price, I mean, there's very little else that's out there. If you go looking for a four-cam uh, V8 in, in a high-end Japanese or German vehicle, you're looking at seriously big money, uh, especially in comparison to this, which is, I mean, this thing isn't even $35,000. And, and on top of that, it comes with pretty much all of those luxury items that you get in vehicles uh, for a lot more money. Now how about the interior? Seats, steering position, controls? It's got the classic sort of big car layout, but they've, they've, they've got this very subtle dot matrix uh, trim in here. Um, if you like black on black, I mean, this car is going to be a complete delight because you know, the package is coal outside and it's got this black nudo leather on the inside and uh, all together it's a, it's a very restrained package. Now this long right hand sweeper exposes a little bit of a weakness. I think they've done such a good job with the chassis, they've still got kind of the old big car seats. But on the other hand, if you look at what the typical role of this vehicle is likely to be, um, it's certainly not going to be thrashing around Willow Springs Raceway. However, if they want to do the job properly and go all the way for the enthusiast, that's the next thing they could tackle. This is a worthy effort. I mean, it is a pretty remarkable uh, car to see coming out of the Mercury division. You know, having a sharply honed full-size car is a, a really pleasant experience. Well, the smile on Pernelli's face was pretty telling. When he got out of the car, he was really uh, just kind of on cloud nine. He said, you have got to take that car out. Yeah, and it's a sophisticated vehicle. Uh, it turns out to be a very polished piece. Now, race car drivers are notoriously bad passengers. I know. So I've been reaching for the brake pedal over here. So I'm going to say, let's head for the pit lane. All right. I thought you'd been quite brave, actually, most of the time. Stay tuned, we're about to hit cruising speed as we take the Marauder on a tour of Hollywood Boulevard and a trip down memory lane when the Speed Channel test drive continues. Well, you've got to admit, it fits right in. But before we start calling it the new American Classic, we thought we would talk with classic car specialist, Gary Richards. This is your 56 Monterey behind us. Tell us how you fell in love with that car. When I was 14 years old, Bill Strop had a car like this. It was on a cover of Hot Rod Magazine that they raced at Daytona. They ran 150 miles an hour there. When you're 14 years old, that makes quite an impression on you. And a friend of my uncle's had a new 56 Mercury that I got to ride in and it was about the coolest car there was. Well, speaking of impressions, what do you think of the new Marauder? What's the first blush? Been waiting 20 years for a car like this. Well, let's not wait any longer. How would you like to take it for a spin down Hollywood Boulevard? I sure would. It's all yours. Okay. Well, Mercury's built such special cars over the years, I find myself owning 15 of them right now. Well, let's see, I have 10 56 Mercury's, three 1955's, three 1961's, and a 67. You buy one, 
and then you see another one and you like it, so you get it, and then a friend or someone says, well, I know where there's another 56, and it just sort of multiplies. Seems like over the years, a lot of the new cars that you see have lost their personality as far as styling goes. And I think that they're realizing this, that's why you see so many retro cars coming back today, like the Marauder. Uh, well, Mercury, for instance, the last Marauder they built was 1970, but now they've come out with the new 2003, and it's just the kind of car that I've been waiting for them to build. It's a nice driving car, it's very taut suspension, has a lot of power, it's very comfortable, and it's a big car, and I like a full-size car. It's the kind of car that feels like it would really be at home out on the open road. At 70, 80 miles an hour, it would just be the kind of car you want to go cross-country in. It has the feel of a big car that we've grown used to, but it has more power, a tighter suspension, and just more of a performance car. Back when I was younger, we did a lot of cruising, and this would be the car you'd want to do it in. For more than half a century, classic muscle cars like these have been part of the American dream. They're big, they're brash, and they don't take a back seat to anybody. Well, Mercury's bringing that dream back to the streets with the all-new 2003 Marauder. With aggressive performance, strapping good looks, and a racing heritage to be proud of, the Mercury Marauder is the kind of car that makes you want to drive again. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tommy Kendall. We'll see you next time.